without liquor and lessen the pain of a hot plate on a volunteer's arm. Is there a way to harness this force and trick your mind into some amazing things? Could you become an Olympic athlete by thinking about push-ups? Well, no. But you'd be surprised what your own brain is capable of. I think the mind can, can massively affect physical performance, especially when you get to the elite level. There's, there's very little difference physically between the athletes, and quite often it's then that they need the mental edge over the other athletes um, to, to come first and, and to win that gold medal. Dr. Caroline Wright and her colleague Dave Smith are sports psychologists with a strong workout ethic. Yet they may seem like heretics to the other gym regulars at the University of Chester in England. One of the things that we know is that, for example, if you imagine performing a sports skill or exercising or anything of that sort, the same areas of the brain start being activated whether you do something or whether you imagine doing it. We can use imagery, we can use a person's imagination to give them a mental workout, if you will, and that results in a lot of the same physical changes as actual training would do. Imagery is not really your imagination. Your brain actually responds with concrete changes. A lot of people think purely in terms of exercising the muscle, but just as important are the signals that are sent from the brain down to the muscles to tell them to contract. And we believe that using imagery can enhance your brain's ability to do this so you can recruit more muscle fibers and actually train harder and become stronger just through using your mind. It comes down to the neurons regulating all brain movement. Think about lifting a particular weight and the neurons will fire to some extent, even if you don't move at all. Exactly how much could a brain be fooled into developing muscles without physical exertion? The researchers recruited novice weightlifters and got them to perform a classic strength test, the bicep curl. The participants came into the study and they, they went on the bicep machine to see how strong that they were. And then one group sat at the machine and imaged completing um, a set of physical practice. Another group actually phys physically practiced the task. The workout for the control group was standard fare. Well, I'm right to the top. And you're doing really good. Keep going, keep going. A few more. But the imagery group had a gym experience like no other. Yeah, so if you just hold on to the handles, and you're just going to complete the imagery in the way we discussed, pay, paying particular attention to the feel of the movement. They sat at the machine watching a video of themselves completing um, the rep that was taken in the, in the pre-test, and then they just tried to vividly image or imagine themselves completing the task. Meanwhile, the control group subjects were still hard at it, wondering how they'd ended up with the raw deal. Six weeks later, everyone was asked to repeat the bicep curl strength test. It's really nice and slow, two up, two down. The results? They simply flew in the face of common sense. Those in the group that lifted weights twice a week had increased their strength by 26%. But the athletes who spent half their time just thinking about exercise showed a 28% increase. Incredible. Through mental exercise, these athletes had not only kept up with the control group, they had surpassed it. I was very shocked when that happened because um, most athletes, if you asked them to replace half of their physical training with imagery, would laugh at you. Here is how it works. The journey of nerve impulses can be set in motion by focused thought about the process of an exercise. It starts in the motor cortex of the brain. As you imagine your workout, electrical impulses travel down the spinal cord into the muscles. They command them to flex and extend, just as if they were under physical exertion. When athletes lift weights, they aren't just exercising their muscles. They're pounding down a well-worn path from the brain to the muscles through this nerve network. I like to think of training neural pathways as walking across a field of long grass. And the first time you walk across it, it's very difficult to find your way. But the more and more that you do it, the easier it becomes and the less likely you are to deviate off that path. 
But don't give up physical exercise in favor of only thinking about it just yet. Imagery is a really powerful tool, and it can certainly help you in your quest to gain fitness, but on its own, it's not going to be an adequate substitute. If you can't train because you're injured or something like that, or you're ill, then imagery can be an effective substitute. But the best thing to do is both imagery and physical training as well. This may surprise you, but there is now a way to look inside your brain